So we've, uh, we are a technology company that is um, based in the Internet of Things uh, marketplace, and we basically build sensors that we network together that generate information for a variety of end markets, which I'll talk about, that uh, create quite a bit of value and, um, and is really the, the driver of the future that, uh, that we see in um, sensor-based technologies to, uh, to get information to customers that um, is important for their businesses. We were founded out of a company called Triton Systems, uh, which is also based out of Boston. We were spun out of there and went public in the Australian exchange in December of 2016. Um, our current valuation, as you can see here, is about uh, a little less than 30 million Aussie. Um, and from a valuation perspective, in comparison to other tech type companies like us, that's quite low. And we'll talk through some of that some more. Um, we again have uh, some pretty significant shareholders from an institutional basis as well as retail individuals and others that make up the whole um, register for the company. And then from a, a key executive perspective, we have two board members that are located in Australia um, that are financially um, you know, backed and cognizant, which is Matt Morgan and Jonathan Tooth, are, um, are venture and um, technology-based uh, board members are based out of the U.S., one in Silicon Valley and then one in Boston as well uh, by the name of George Laura. Um, we recently built the executive team up um, as I joined the company back in November of last year and we've been uh, adding some um, other executives that have as well moved companies from this stage into a, a much larger stage. So we have the right background and the right people involved in the company. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of the actual markets that we address. And what I will say just in generality is they are quite large and growing pretty rapidly. There are three target markets and three of what I call lead markets that we are in. Uh, medical technology is one, um, uh, mining, and then animal health. Those are the three. Now, our technology can be used in others, but we've actually focused down into these areas because we feel that we can actually grow significantly just by getting more expertise in these areas. And so what we do deliver is sort of three components to what's the Internet of Things. It's the what, when, and where. Um, and the team in Boston that we have develops what's called MEM structures, which I'll describe some more, and, and sensors. And the team that we have in Berlin is the backbone, is essentially the wireless network that we put together um, and the analytic software that fits with that. So in this past fiscal year, which we just ended at the end of June, uh, we grew very significantly, over 400 percent to um, a little over 6 0.35 million U.S. dollars. I'm showing U.S. dollars here. And um, we've projected now, we've actually upped our forecast for fiscal 19 that we just started to between 10 and a half and then 11 and a half million dollars. Um, reason we're so bullish on this is we have contracts in place and a handful of customers that support this growth. So this growth that we're showing you is based on existing engagements that we have. We continue to add to that pie, but that's what we have today. Um, and again, as I pointed out, these are fairly new underpenetrated markets and based on you know, our analysis are quite large. In two of the areas, so in mining, we're already engaged in over 70 mines worldwide. On the animal health side, we're engaged in over 400 farms worldwide. So there's existence proof that our technology works and it's, it's used in those places. Um, and we believe that there's a long-term opportunity here to take this platform that we've built, so this hardware platform, add software to it to do more analytics and hence um, more value to customers. And I'll talk through how we get that, get to that. Because what we want to move is move the model from being a capital uh, intensive model to an operating expense model, um, which is more based around services. So let me talk about the, the few key markets that we've got. The first one is the medical technology market. And um, here we're developing sensors and, and uh, structures in uh, micro machines, they're called, 
we have our own manufacturing facility in Boston to, uh, to, to drive this business. And it's a very unique business. It's a, it's a process that can be run as a semiconductor process if you go into those type of devices or on other types of uh, materials. Um, what we show here is the, the large win which we've um, exposed to the public market, which is a company called Abiumed, which is a leader in the heart pump uh, market. Uh, we supply the sensors to them for their heart pumps and have a contract in place that w is just literally starting as we speak. Last quarter was the first quarter that we had some significant revenue from that. This addresses what's called microfluidics, so anything with any kind of fluids, you're sensing that. In this case, obviously, it's blood, um, but there's other fluids and, and things that we do, such as skin patches, organs on a chip, uh, a variety of different technologies. So these are futuristic biotechnology growth potential um, uh, product there is. The market size, we believe, again, is about $4 billion in microfluidics. Um, and currently, about 10 of our dozen uh, customers are in that marketplace. Um, half of those, about six of them, are in production already, and we're going to be migrating the other six this year into production. So we're pretty uh, far along the way. We've got, with Abiumed, a three-year, multi-million dollar agreement that will uh, kind of drive the, uh, the product revenue uh, for the near term. This is a little deeper description of what this is because some people are not familiar with the technology. But you can see here, as I'm pointing to the fab part, that is actually the manufacturing facility we have in place. They're in clean rooms. We build wafers that are shown above that, MEMS wafers, or on glass. So we can do it in multiple ways, which then builds these structures. Uh, this is a large structure but they're placed in these very small sensors. So this is a blow up of that sensor right there, um, which is again, a fluidic sensor uh, of some sort. Uh, so as you can tell, this is a you know, very sophisticated um, technology and business that we run and, and we manage the, the manufacturing of that uh, in-house. The second market that we address is actually in a different space and also slightly different from what we provide. So that part of the business that I just described is sort of the very bare bones. So you've got MEM structures and sensors. And what I'm going to describe now is a system essentially that takes sensor input and gives you uh, data on the outside. And the market that we address here is animal health. Um, and what we, what we typically do is have a tag of some sort that we put on an animal that can, can um, actually watch how the animal uh, is, is moving. So how it chews, how it moves, if it's laying down, standing up. So we have very sensitive sensors that give that kind of analytic data. With, um, with the right software in place, you can then take that data and then determine if the animal is a healthy animal or on its way to some sort of sickness. As far as we can tell in the marketplace today, this system is um, by far the world's best at predicting uh, animal health. It's used in dairy, dairy uh, situations today, and we've been able to show a 7% yield improvement just by using this and then actually isolating animals prior to them getting sick. It's, a, it's had quite a bit of impact, so much so that our uh, partner on the system integration side, which is a company called Smartbow, was acquired by Zoetis. And Zoetis is um, the world's largest animal pharma company. Um, and what they're trying to do here is use this to educate farmers to be vaccinating their herds instead of doing antibiotic treatments to singular animals. It's a big upside for them if they can make that transition. Um, so we have contracts in place with them to deploy this, and as I described earlier, we're in hundreds of farms today and we're projecting to go to thousands uh, in this fiscal year. Uh, we're using the Zoetis as sales force to go into the market, which is about 3,000 people strong, um, mostly with veterinarian backgrounds, to again drive this into the marketplace. And our contract in place does have minimums that, you know, Zoetis will take. Um, in a similar type environment um, it, where there is um, very little infrastructure, just like there is in farming, there is in the mine, mine uh, aspect. 
And what we do here is we provide location data. Um, we essentially use the same system that we used in the animal farm instance that allows to give you location and movement, say. And we put it into a mine for workers, for safety reasons, is actually the main driver, uh, for workers and for, for equipment. And uh, again, here we've been deployed in about 70 mines worldwide. Obviously, with a market size of over 60,000 mines worldwide, we're just starting to penetrate this market. Uh, but some of the mines are quite large. We show one here that is um, in Turkey, which has thousands of workers and thousands of tags. So we tag each one of these people so we know exactly where they are, either through their cap lamps or, or some sort of communication device or actually just on their bodies. And again, the system then goes through and in, the, uh, in sort of their SCADA software environment, they can then determine where and where these people are have collision avoidance zones um, and deploy other things such as um, charges, et cetera, in the mine. It's now being optimized to do more productivity. So we, have, we are so highly accurate that people are starting to look at automating vehicles within the mines with this technology to allow them, again, to kind of move to a digital mine environment. Um, as well as linking to other systems. So we're turning ventilation systems on and off, things like that, to be able to save energy um, and be uh, much more effective. Uh, this is a, a big growth opportunity for us. We're adding about a mine to two mines uh, every month, um, and um, you know, we expect that to continue uh, as we move forward. We're slightly changing the model here. We've been very highly focused on system integrators. Um, now we're going direct to mines because many of them have the technology departments to actually de deploy these things, um, as well as to some of the tier one uh, equipment manufacturers. And what this shows is sort of what th what's in a tag. And it's important to understand it that what we can do is we can locate things to a very precise point, uh, and I'm talking about centimeters here. Many of us are already tagged with our own phone, which is shown here. Um, it's kind of the, the world's most deployed tag. It has a sensor in it. If you're outside, GPS will tell you exactly where you are within, say, 20, 30 meters. And what I'm talking about is 20 to 30 centimeters, so it's a significant difference. When you're inside, you can't, you can't tell where you are. Uh, so that's essentially where our systems provide information is inside um, in, in buildings or underground in mines as we've shown earlier or obviously in farms as well. The sensors themselves besides location have other intelligence just like your phone does have gyroscopes and accelerometers so it tells again direction how fast you're moving things like that. Uh, so it's very much similar to the same type of um, uh, a technology that's used in handsets today but for much more precise information. What we're doing to go beyond sort of just selling these components into these markets is we're trying to offer a full system solution. So in order to do that, our software that we have, which is mostly an embedded software to make the things work, we need to move up the, 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 the stack and then offer analytics. So as we talked about earlier with the animal health situation, the analytics are what, what is very valuable to the farmers of the movement of the cow, how that again determines if it's sick or not. That's a true in pretty much all these other markets and, and we're, we're partnering with uh, external software houses to help us be able to deliver an entire system so then we can do it as a service to, to those customers. The other piece we're doing is our Boston team is a very good sensor organization, makes very small um, products as, a, as it was shown before, very low power, and so we're, we're actually taking some of their technology and embedding it into this location technology. Um, and so the first products we're doing is gas sensing, and so for instance, in mining and animal health both have issues with gas, and so we're going to be embedding in the tags of the miners, say today, um, very low power, uh, low cost. Uh, gas sensors. Today the, the way they do it is very expensive, very inaccurate, not in the right place at the right time. So this is a, an example of what we call sensor fusion of putting together multiple sensors to get more valuable information. And so this just describes sort of this change in model 
Uh, so if you followed the company from last year to this year, we moved our gross margins from you know the low 40% level to about 50%. We see our, ourselves moving into the mid-50s and even as high as 60% gross margin um, in this coming fiscal year, primarily through some of the model changes that I just mentioned, as well as other cost reductions that we're doing. Uh, that's a big focus for us, um, and you know, our belief is anything you're doing over 50% gross margin is, um, you know, is obviously high value to the, to the people that you're providing that information to. And so our, our fiscal year 19 outlook, um, again, has been revised up. Um, we had predicted about 60% growth. We've now improved that to 70%. We'll be between 10 and a half and 11 and a half million uh, US dollars in sales. Um, our operating expenses will increase slightly, but not at the same rate, clearly, as the revenue. We can definitely scale this business up from where we are today. We, we see a line of sight that gets us profitable near the end of this fiscal year. So the last few months of this year we'll be running on a you know, cash flow positive basis. Um, and that's a big, big goal for us. We believe that that'll change the valuation metrics of, of, uh, of our company dramatically. And, um, and we, all of this is based off of, as I mentioned earlier, existing customers and existing contracts. So we feel uh, highly confident of this. Um, moving forward and so um, you know the contracts are in place that we talked about um, you know we've got pretty significant year-on-year -year growth there's definitely capital needs in order for us to to make that happen um, we've got a good mix between uh, multiple different markets that are leveraging the same technology um, we're going to continue to develop and add more value, hence try to get more of the spend that our customers have in these, in these marketplaces. One of the key investments for us this year is really the go-to-market resources. What's obvious to me and to our team is our technology has been proven out over many years, so actually our R&D expenditures are not as significant or don't need to you know, ramp up. Um, but our sales and marketing efforts, we need to have a broader reach into broader geographies and, uh, and in these marketplaces. Um, and so we, we expect to start you know, building a much bigger pipeline going into fiscal year 20, and we see another big growth year post this year. And then finally, from a, a valuation perspective, we honestly believe that we're at a, a very low point um, based on you know, other market comparables that are out there. Um, and we're actually, again, generating revenue and hopefully a profitability before the end of this fiscal year that should drive more valuation moving forward. 